A financial risk management guys, no long time, no doing video. I know that you guys are going to graduate in two weeks, so I want to use this video just to tell you good luck and it was great teaching you, very good cohort, very good grades and very, very attentive. So what I want to do now is to talk about the binomial model for option pricing. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the replicating portfolio strategy. And in the next one, I'm going to talk about the risk neutral probability. Okay? So what is this replicating portfolio and how do we use it in order to value options? So the guiding principle behind it, let's, let's assume that you have a stock here and then you have two outcomes. The good outcome is $200 and the bad outcome $50. So, at the time when you have an option that matures, let's say in two years or in one year, you know that there can be only two outcomes for the stock. One is 200, another is uh, 50. Let's say that the, that, the, that the interest rate is zero, that you don't have any interest rates, and your strike for the option is exactly 100. Okay? So in this case, when you go up, okay, the option value will be 100 here. And when you go down, the option value will be zero because it's a call option. Had it been something else, the, you know, the option values would be, would, would be the same, would, would change, okay? In this setup, what you want to do, you want to value the option. And you're doing it with the replicating portfolio. Okay? What does it mean to have a replicating portfolio? What you want to do you want to construct the option using, replicate the option using S, which is your underlying stock, and cash. Let's abbreviate it with C, okay? The reason being that you know the price of the stock today and you know the price of the cash today, okay? So if you, if you have a replicating portfolio which will replicate the cash flow in the future exactly using this and this, Okay, because you guys know these guys, okay, the price of this portfolio will be exactly the price of the, st of the option. And why is that? This is because of the no arbitrage principle. Which says that if you have two securities, let's, let's denote them S1 and S2. Don't, don't get confused with the stock. Don't get confused with S. S1 and S2 can be any two securities. They can be bonds, they can be commodities, they can be futures, anything, okay? Where you are going to have the same cash flow stream for the first security as for the second security, okay? And you want the CI equals to DI. The price of, the, of S1 and S2 must be equal because if it's not equal, you have an arbitrage. You can sell one security and you can buy the other security because the price is not the same. You will make profit today and you will not have a problem to meet the cash flow because the first security will give you the cash flow and the second security you will just give the cash flow to the guys that you sold the other security to. Okay? So because of that, it's an arbitrage principle which means that nobody wants to be a sucker, you know, that you do not want anybody to take you for a ride and, you know, make make cash loss on your expense. So it's less that you care about yourself whether you have a profit, it's more than you don't want anybody else to have a profit on your expense, okay? That's kind of a game theory, you know, game theory approach, okay? So this is an arbitrage principle. So now what you want to do, you want to use this arbitrage principle to value the option in those two outcomes. And what, how do you do that? So what you want to do, you want to create a replicating portfolio. So you want to have WS, number of shares you want to buy, and you want to have WK, amount of cash you want to invest. Now, interest rates are zero, so you don't care about the amount of cash you are investing, okay? And now what you want to do, you want to do, you, you don't, you want to do the following thing. You want to have basically WS here and WK. So in the, good out, in the good state of the world, you will have the following equation. WS plus 200 plus WK equals 200. And in the bad state of the world, you have WS times 50 plus WK equals to, to zero, right? Why zero? Because you have zero here. 
Okay? Now, in order to solve it, you just subtract this from this, and you are going to get the WS times 100 and uh, the WS times uh, 150 equals to basically 100. So from that, you get the WS equals to 100 divided by 150, which is going to be basically two thirds. What will be the WK in this case? Well, this is interesting. So you're going to get basically 50 times 2 divided by 3 plus WK. So you're going to get the WK equals 0. So WK equals to minus 100 divided by 3. So in order for you to replicate this portfolio, what this tells you, you need to buy two thirds of the stock plus you want to basically borrow or sell or borrow 100, you know, 100 divided by 3. So around $33. $33 of cash. Now, it's amusing to verify that it's also valid for the other one. Well, it's not surprising, but let's verify it. So it's going to be 2 thirds times 200 minus 100 divided by 3, because that's what we have here. And this equals to 300 divided by 3, which is exactly 100. Now what you are going to say, you are going to say the following. OK, now I have the replicating portfolio. What is the price of this portfolio now? Well, I have 2 thirds of the stock, and I have $50, okay, minus 50, minus 100 uh, over $3 of this. So I'm going to get basically two thirds times 100 minus, and here I'm going to get 100 times 3. So I'm going to get overall that my price is 100 over 3. So I would pay $33 and one third for this option. This is my option value. Okay? Now, what is very interesting in this replicating portfolio, and I talked with you about this in class, and I'm going to repeat it here, okay, that this portfolio doesn't have anything to do with the probability that you assign by going up or down, right? A classical way that people always test the understanding of young people that coming or, you know, new people that coming and, you know, to those financial institutions and want to trade with options, okay, they say, okay, if I have 250 and and 50, and let's say that my probability here is 70%, and my probability here is 0 0.3, what is going to be my, you know, what is going to be my, uh, my price of the option? And 99 out of 100 people, okay, they will say, oh my God, this is so cool. This is 0 0.7 times 100 plus 0 0.3 times 0, which is going to be $70, okay? But this is not correct. This is not correct. Why is it not correct? Because these are subjective probabilities, okay? The pricing that we have here of replicating portfolios do not have any, anything to do with the probabilities that you assign to the, you know, to, to the outcomes going up or down, okay? It has nothing to do with it. And I actually has to, I have to you know, say this again and again and again and again and again and again and again until you guys will understand it, okay? It has nothing to do with the outcome with your probabilities going up or down. Think about the futures price, right? That we said that in a futures case, okay, the expected futures contract or the fair contract price have nothing to do with your expectations, what will be the price. So if you, for example, have $100 today and the price and the R, the interest rate is 5%, okay, what you are going to have, you are going to have 100 times E to the 0 0.05, and let's say your future matures in one year, so it's 0 0.05 times one. It has nothing to do with the fact that maybe you think that the stock will double itself, okay? The futures contract is basically fixed uh, completely with, what, with your, you know, with whatever data you have now. And this is exactly the same principle. The fact that you have these subjective probabilities have nothing to do with the price of the option. It's actually very important to, to remember, okay? Now, what about if you have interest rates? So let's say, okay, so the only thing that changes in this setup, the WS times 200 plus, and here you have WK. So now you re replicate the portfolio, but then when you calculate the, you know, when you calculate the, uh, the price of the option, all you need to do is to discount back. So instead of having here, 100 divided by 3, all you, you need to replace it if you have interest rates, minus 100 divided by 3, 
times e to the minus 0 0.05 times 1 or whatever the, your time frame of the option is. So if it's not 1, let's say it's going to be half, okay? The only thing that you need to remember that the units of this guy, okay, are given in a certain time frame, right? So if you have a risk for rate for two years, it may be different, it still will be annualized, okay? So you want to, that, so this guy will always be given in units of years. So if you have one month, it's going to be 0 0.05 times 12, for example, okay? So that's all. All right, so this was the first part. The second part I'm going to, to talk about this valuation with risk neutral probabilities. The reason I'm to going to talk about risk neutral probabilities because this is actually becoming cumbersome the more you, you, the more you move uh, forward. So if you have, for example, here, you will have something like that, and this is 400, and this is going to be, let's say, 100, right? Remember that, uh, see, you know, you can see that it actually came back to the initial value, so this is what we call a recombining tree, a recombining tree, okay? Because if you go up and down, you will get the same result. So if you go from here up and you go from here down, you will get the same result. A priori, the replicating portfolio will not be the same. So you will have to do this exercise again and again and again and again and again, and this is basically becoming very cumbersome. So you have a mechanism of what we call risk-neutral probabilities in order for you to actually, uh, to actually replace it. Now, before I will go, there is another very important thing that I want to tell here, that I want to say here. Okay, and this is that those cash flows do not be, you don't need to marry to, the, to be married to those cash flows to replicate it, right? If, for example, you have a put option, you're doing the same thing. So you have actually here, you have uh, uh, whatever you have here is 50, right? Because let's say you're struck at 50 and here it's going to be zero. However, much more interesting examples that you can actually replicate, you can value bonds using this. So imagine that you have a zero coupon bond and you're, you know, and you have 150 here. So what will, 250, what will be your cash loss if your principal, let's say, is 100, okay? So here, okay, it will be 100 because the company is, is intact, so you'll be able to return, you know, to return the, the principal. But here, you will not be able to return the principal, so your, your uh, you know, your payoff here for bonds, for bonds, for zero coupon bonds will be 50. So then you have the situation where you have 100 here, you have uh, uh, 200 here, you have 50 here, and then here you have 100, and here you have 50. So when you replicate this, right, your equation is going to be Ws times, um, times uh, 200 plus Wk equals to 100, and what you are going to have here is Ws times 50 plus Wk equals to 50. Okay, and now when you subtract, what you are going to get is actually, okay, so you subtract here, you are going to get basically that 150, okay, that 150 times Ws equals to 100, so you are going to get Ws equals to 1 over 3, okay, and uh, in this case, okay, 50, you will have that your Wk is going to be 100, uh, you know, um, is going to be here uh, 100 over 3. Okay, so you have here uh, third times 50 plus two thirds times 100. Okay, so 100 over 3, and overall you are going to get 50. Okay, and then if you want to value this bond, it's going to be basically the price of the stock here is 100, so you're going to get basically 100 divided by 3 plus. 103, so your bond is going to be 200 divided by 3, which is around 66 and uh, two-thirds dollars, okay? So what you see here, that this can be applied also to value bonds through a, cor you know, or, or value corporate structure. And that was a major idea behind the Black-Scholes paper. The Black-Scholes paper is actually titled as the valuation of option and corporate liabilities because Black and Scholes understood that you can actually think about corporate liabilities as some kind of options on the value of the company. So if you know the value of the company, you can in principle actually value corporate liabilities. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. You have to open your horizons and realize that this actually valuation technique will not, is not good only option, but it's also good for some other instruments as well. 
okay? Whenever you have cash flows and you have some randomness, you can actually apply this kind of methodology to do, you know, to, to kind of value those options, all right? So hopefully you enjoy this video. I'm going to record now immediately another video where I'm going to talk about risk neutral probabilities. Thank you and have a great day.